the thing that all of us have to remember is that we had already had uh, four different wars in 25 years in the Middle East. Every time the American worldwide nuclear forces has been placed on alert was a result of the combat in the Middle East. The Middle East is uh, an area of, uh, of tremendous concentration of long-standing historic hatred, uh, distrust, based on race, uh, religion, and uh, a fight over precious land. And, and these complicated issues uh, had to be addressed in order to make sure we had peace not only in that region, but also that our country in the future wouldn't be faced with the prospect of a war in which we were directly involved. Peace in the Middle East had eluded statesmen for nearly 30 years by the time Jimmy Carter took office. Tension in the region had again reached a crisis point by 1978. In July, President Carter decided on a bold stroke. He invited two historic enemies to sit down together at Camp David to negotiate peace. It would take all his skill at personal diplomacy to get an agreement between Anwar Sadat of Egypt and Menachem Begin of Israel. Sadat uh, kind of looked upon himself as a modern day pharaoh, the leader of a nation. In fact, the leader of the entire Muslim world. Uh, he was uh, bold, courageous, uh, general uh, in his approach, not given to uh, concern about specific issues or details or semantics or the use of words. Uh, he saw things in strategic terms, and he wanted an overall settlement. Uh, he didn't want to leave to uh, subordinates uh, the responsibility of trying to, to conclude the more difficult and contentious issues. He was willing to address them himself. He came to Camp David looking for a comprehensive settlement. I think, if anything, Sadat trusted me too much. Begin was uh, also a very strong and forceful and courageous political leader. He had um, been raised in an environment where he was uh, the opposition, constantly condemning not only what the British did and what others did outside uh, Israel, but even what the in incumbent political leaders in Israel did themselves. He was thrust into the leadership and uh, assumed it without reticence and with a great deal of gratification and enthusiasm. Uh, Begin was a semanticist. He liked to deal in words and minutia. And whenever the pressures got on him, instead of retreating into strategic concepts and considerations, he retreated into details. And he liked to fiddle with words. Uh, Begin came to Camp David uh, with the idea of just dealing in generalities and not uh, with those very contentious and difficult specifics. He wanted to have a, a general statement of what we might do in the future and then turn it over to his Secretary of State or Foreign Minister and his Defense Minister to conclude the agreements in the future. This obviously wouldn't work. And uh, I think instead of uh, trusting me too much, as was the case with uh, Sadat, uh, Begin probably didn't trust me quite enough. After the first few days at Camp David, the differences separating Sadat and Begin seemed insurmountable. The two men refused to even sit down again at the same table. With the summit threatening to collapse, President Carter moved to overcome the impasse by developing his own peace plan. Day after day, he doggedly pursued an agreement. In the highly charged atmosphere, he continually challenged Sadat and Begin with fresh proposals and counterproposals in an effort to hammer out a framework for peace. The 13 days brought uh, a steady, uh, tedious, laborious, most often discouraging uh, incremental move uh, toward agreement. The uh, high spots, unfortunately, were those uh, crisis moments when either Begin or Sadat announced that they were leaving, that they were giving up in uh, hopelessness and uh, animosity and disgust. And then I had to induce them to stay for a few more hours or maybe another day and, and give me a chance to find some common ground. Uh, on one occasion, when Begin was uh, completely uh, committed to leave, I carried some photographs of his grandchildren over. And I had found the name of all eight grandchildren. I had written them on the photograph. Uh, Begin looked at them in a perfunctory way. And then he saw the name of his uh, little children. Uh, whom he loved, and, and, and we started talking about our grandchildren and how the world might affect them adversely if we couldn't find peace. He changed his mind and decided to stay. 
On another occasion, I was informed that Sadat had packed his bags, directed the Egyptian delegation to leave and call for a helicopter to go back to Egypt. Uh, I was distressed with this, and I went and uh, visited Sadat in his uh, cottage, closed the door, and we had one of the most uh, intense uh, human encounters that I have ever experienced. I told Sadat that if he did leave, he would be violating his uh, word of honor to me, that he would not walk out, that it would destroy the relationships between him and me, which we both considered to be very valuable, and it would also damage the relations between our two countries and brand Sadat as an obstacle to peace. So he thought about it a while and said, uh, we'll stay. And from then we began to make uh, ever more progress. The restraint on Sadat was a uh, concern among his own Egyptian delegation that he was going too far, that he had made concessions in recognizing Israel that would not be accepted in the Arab world. But Sadat courageously said, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is peace. On the 12th day, September 16, 1978, a final agreement was reached that would become the foundation for the future pursuit of peace in the Middle East. A prophet once said that peace is infinitely harder to make than war. Camp David was not an end, but a beginning. The legacy of Camp David uh, is still to be determined by historical events. Uh, six months after the Camp David Accords were signed with a great uh, sense of euphoria and thanksgiving, uh, the progress had in effect been aborted. There was no follow-up. We couldn't even get a treaty between Israel and Egypt. So uh, perhaps I took our nation's uh, prestige and my own political future in my hands and uh, decided to go to Cairo and to Jerusalem to make one last minute appeal to Begin and Sadat to uh, conclude a peace treaty and we were finally successful. Uh, that peace treaty has, uh, has stood the test of time. The other part of the uh, Camp David Accords uh, have not been so successful because of uh, various reasons. Uh, we've not been adequately successful in inducing Israel to withdraw from the West Bank, nor in granting to the Palestinians uh, full autonomy as required or their basic human rights. But no matter what happens in the future, in the uh, efforts to bring about peace, the, the basic premises of the Camp David Accords will have to be the foundation for progress to be expected in years to come. <laughs>